today's topic is about Xlog, the Android Logger Library. On hearing the Android Logger, you may think about the Android Debug or Verbose Log. The Xlog and the Android Log are very similar. Using Android Log, we sometimes see some scenes where the log trace in the log cat is extremely messy. For example, the long JSON logs in the log cat are not formatted and the thread and stack trace information are not organized. To get started, copy the dependency. Open Android Studio and create a new project with an empty activity. Main activity should have nothing besides an onCreate method. Activity main XML file has a single text view. Open the build .gradle file in app module and paste the dependency. Click sync now. Initialize xlog. There are two initialization types, simple and advanced. You will learn the simple way first. The advanced way looks unnecessarily big here. You will learn it after the simple way. As suggested, you need to initialize xlog in the onCreate method of application class. Create an application class called app and override the onCreate method. This method will be called when the application is starting before any activity, service, or receiver objects, excluding content providers, have been created. Log level indicates how important the log is. Priority of log levels is all debug error info none verbose warn. All is for printing all logs. Go to Android Manifest XML file and add the app class. Copy the sample log to see a demo of the X log. You need to add a click listener, so give the text view an ID. To save time, you can use Kotlin Synthetics. The recommended way is, however, view binding as of 2020. Add the plugin Kotlin Android Extensions. Click Sync Now. Set the click listener. Run the app. This was a simple demo to see if the library is initialized as expected. The xlog tag is the default. Enable thread info. Enable stack trace or convenience methods. Chain those methods and run the app. Remember to filter by ADN this time. Borders make it easy to differentiate between the log outputs. You can see the stack trace and thread information. Depth in stack trace is the number of stack trace elements you can log. Use a zero if you want all. Run the app. Notice only two stack trace elements are printed in logcat. If you disable thread info, the thread info won't be printed with the log message. Run the app. You can pretty format JSON logs in the logcat with xlog. Use a .json instead of .d to format the JSON string. Compare the JSON printed between xlog and default Android log class. Run the app. Notice the formatting of JSON. You can use advanced initialization to have a better control of xlog class. Go to app.kt class and log configuration builder and then chain methods. Log configuration is a configuration used for logging that will affect all logs. It acts as a default configuration. Go to main activity and safely remove the chained methods as you already defined them in the app class. Run the app. Notice the default configuration in app class applied to all the xlogs defined in the main activity. For example, change the stack trace depth to 2 in the app class and all the xlogs defined anywhere will have a depth of 2. You can see the scope of the library by looking at the source code and internal classes. init method initializes the log system. Log level is a builder and so is tag. Enable thread info. Disable thread info, enable stack trace. You can find more in that class. All in log level in an integer that is meant to print all logs. None is meant to print no logs. You can see other log levels here. Go to main activity. You can look at the internal methods. Dot D logs a message with a log level of debug. 
the dot json logs a json stream with level debug by default the log level can be changed json formatter interface is used to format the json stream formatter is an interface that is used to format the data to make it readable look through more methods and classes to see how the library works internally